In this lab, I'm going to show you how to configure static routes so that traffic from one network can go to a remote network. We will begin with router 1. If you'll open the router and go to the command line interface, just click in the white space and hit enter. R1 will show up. Type enable. You're in privilege mode and from here I want you to execute a show IP route. We have two directly connected routes in this router. That means our fast ether, our fast ethernet interface is enabled and our serial interface is enabled. And if you don't believe me, do a show IP interface brief and you'll see that 172.16.3.1 is our fast ethernet and 172.16.2.1 is our serial. Okay. Now I promised to show you how to configure a static route. Two ways um, that remote networks can be found on a router. That's using dynamic routing protocols or static routing. With static routing you manually configure it. Dynamic routing will learn the network depending on what type of routing protocol it is to add routes into the router. We get to learn that later. First what you need to do is enter config terminal so you're in global mode and we're going to configure IP route that's the beginning of the static route command. What we're going to do in R1 is configure the remote networks. I have two directly connect to connected networks. You can see which ones are the interfaces here. But I don't have networks to 172.16.1.0 or 192.168.1.0 or 192.168.2.0. So I need to configure three static routes so that I have a way for my traffic to get out to those routes. This is the command. IP route destination network 172.16.1.0 subnet mask is 255.255.255.0 so I have the destination network which is 1.0 and its subnet mask and the last part of the command is entering either the exit interface or the next hop IP address either one is fine in this case Let's put the exit interface for R1, and that should be our serial 000. So type serial 000. Hit enter. We're going to continue to add our IP routes. I have another network, 192.168.1.0, 255.255.255.0. Same interface. See, once you start doing this, it's really easy. 192.168.2.0, 255.255.255.0, same interface. Okay. I've added three routes to three remote networks. I'm going to end, copy, run, start, and then I'm going to do a show IP route. Three static routes are entered, so I have five total routes. Now, Let's take a look at PC2. I want to ping from PC1 to PC2. So the IP address for PC2 is 172.16.1.10. Okay. So from PC1, I want to ping out to PC2. Let's see if we can do that. Your command prompt ping 172.16.1.10. Hmm. We're not getting anything back. It's timing out on us. Well, there's a reason for it. I've configured router 1 to send information to router 2 to PC2, but I've not configured router 2 to recognize the remote network to 172.16.3.0. That's why we're not getting any return traffic. So guess what I have to do? I have to go to R2 and configure static routes in order for them to return uh, traffic back. So in router 2, you enable config T and I'm going to do IP route 
172.16.3.0. That's my R1 network, 255.255.255.0. And just to show you the different way of of putting in the last part of the command instead of the exit interface for R2, I'm going to do the next hop address. The next hop address is the next router's interface, which is the serial interface, and that's going to be 172.16.2.1. Dot. Make sure what that is. 2.1. Okay, so I've entered the remote network. I'm going to do one more. 192.168.2.0.255.255.255.0. I have a different next hop for this network. See, this is the network I'm trying to get to. It's my remote network. It's not in my routing IP t uh, routing table in R2. I didn't show that to you, but you can do a show IP route on R2 dis before you begin configuring, and you'll notice there's not there's not a uh, an entry for that route. But my next hop from R2 to R3, the serial interface is 192.168.1.1, so that's what I will put here. I'll end, copy, run, start. And I'm, I'm only entering routes to remote networks that are not in the routing table. That's all I'm doing. I just want traffic to go there and come back. So, let's take a look now at our show IP route in R2. And I have two statically configured routes. Now I know I have the remote network centered in both these routers and I can ping from PC1 over to PC2 now. So let's type in the same command, ping 172.16.1.10, and let's see if we did right. You're getting a reply back. There you go. That reply back is telling me I have connectivity to the network, and that'll end this video.